we got Taylor Kitsch on. Uh, how's how's it going? How you you have a very nice like backdrop going yeah. on. Yeah. Do I? Yeah, uh, I grew those flowers actually, <laughs> so it's nice, you know, to show them off a bit. You just oh, depressed, yeah. or you just show up with a pot of flour. You're like, I this is this is what I do. It's just, it's just my aura, actually. I got a green thumb. People don't know that about me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's what they call one green thumb kitsch. That's what they call. Yeah. yeah, that's the nickname. It's it's actually quite long and annoying, but it's worth it. <laughs> yeah, too bad. It's a shame it's stuck. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We've got a lot to talk about. We'll start out though with the terminal list. All eight episodes coming exclusively to Prime Video on July 1st. There's a trailer out now if you want to check it out. We've we got the episodes ahead of time, obviously. Oh, nice show. But I will read for those who don't know what the show's about. Series follows James Reese, played by Chris Pratt. Very stacked cast, by the way. A lot of big names, including yourself in this. After his entire platoon of Navy SEALs is ambushed on a covert mission, Reese, Reese returns home to his family with conflicting memories of the event and questions about his culpability. As new evidence comes to light, Reese discovers dark forces working against him, endangering not only his life, but the lives of those he loves. This has a big production feel to it. Yeah. Uh, you don't even need to watch the episodes to know that. Even just a trailer alone will do that for you. But then when you dive into it, especially, it just has that feeling. And off the top, I mean, yeah, you have a pretty big executive producer and director behind this who is, who is a rather large action legend. So that that helps a bit. Just a bit. Just a bit. Um, no, man. It's I mean, thank you for doing my work, by the way, in this. pitch. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I kind of wish everybody had to do that. And I'm just listening, going, yeah, keep going. Keep going. Um, yeah, it's it's the company you keep. Right. It's, you know, Pratt. Uh, Fuqua was a was a big factor in me signing on. I wanted to work with him, and and uh, he had wanted to work with me, which was great. And um, it, it's a very original take on something we may have seen before, and and it really is a psychological thriller that does need eight hours to lead and mislead you throughout. And I will say the payoff at the end is quite gutting. Yeah, it, it's it has this. You're right. It has this, this again, this, this feel to it. And it's one of those things where when you watch something like this, you're like, this is why we as, I guess, a culture of like viewership, like viewers have been so addicted to, and Amazon's a great example of this, like this platform of storytelling, especially yeah. with someone like Antoine Fuqua, who makes great movies, but to have yeah. like that much like runway to tell a story and like for his style too, what is something different that he does compared to other actors? You've had, you've been in so many big time movies. What is something he does differently, especially in this format where again, it is eight hours, it's eight episodes. And you can really dive into every character and every bit of the story. Yeah. You're, you're getting a chance or an opportunity to let it breathe, right? You're, you're getting, and, and especially with Ben, there's a duplicity there that is a lot of fun. There's a fine line there that I have to walk throughout the whole show of how much I reveal and more, more importantly, don't reveal to you, the viewer. And then in regards to Foucault, man, I will say to anyone listening that wants to ever direct or storytell is, is to empower the other people around you, uh, lean into what they do best. And, um, and that's what he does. He gives you a lot of freedom. He doesn't direct you before we do a take. He doesn't over direct. Um, and, and that is very empowering for me as an actor. And, and I love that process of him just even like, it's silly, but I mean, I love the, like the wardrobe and God, man, when you're in like pre-production, there's 58 people telling you to wear a purple shirt when I want to wear that, you know, huge hoodie and sandals and have sleeves of tats. And then it goes all the way to the top. And then it comes back to me and they're just like, no, <laughs> you know, Honoring. you're like having these crazy creative conversations. And Fuqua was in my corner the whole time. And we won that little battle, if you will. And um, and it pays off. You know, it's like you, you want to make these guys your own and breathe life into it and have it those guys. So, you know, he's a huge supporter of that and the, and the creative process. And that's when you get the best work. I want to go off what you just what you said there. You talked about because I mean, look, this may shock you, but Ken, Jack, and I are not actors; we're just podcasters, um, so we don't have that skill set, which is probably the case for most people listening to this pod. But you mentioned directing before something is actually happening. Like, 
for for you in that in any role like is that i guess i'll use like a sports analogy like i'm a golfer like if somebody mentioned something about my shot before i'm about to hit it i don't really want to hear that all the time because now i'm totally. in my own head is that is it that type of thing where it's like shit now i'm thinking about almost two trains of thought hopefully no no offense to you but i don't get thrown off my game that easy <laughs> well, you, you, you were, I, I know you were a pretty solid hockey player, but yeah, I, I was right. Like, yeah. But it, it boils down to trust, right? Mm-hmm. And especially if someone is coming at that in, in a creative sense of like, like I, I've been doing it a little bit now, and, and I have a, a lot of trust in my ability. And sometimes you never want it to come to being like, okay, well, why'd you fucking hire me if you're just going to come in here and try and puppeteer this? Like no yeah. one's going to win. Yeah. You know, you're not going to reach its full potential. And uh, especially with Pratt and I, man, there, there's a brotherhood there that needed to be organic. And if it wasn't, this whole show is not going to work. Um, yeah. So you let the process fall where it will and trust us in what we do. And that we've done our homework and that we know this SEAL warrior ethos and we understand the brotherhood that's going to keep this whole thing afloat. So, um, yeah, to to over direct um, is, I don't know, man, it just doesn't you're not going to get the best result. And that's what everybody on set is there for is to reach that potential. So, yeah, in regards to sports, I think. You know, if you have a coach fucking after every shift, I'm hopping the boards and he's got the whiteboard in front of me and he's trying to tell me like, no, 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 I'm this go to the bottom hash mark. Take that off there. Go off the glass. And it's just like now you're just a robot. <laughs> yeah, you're not yeah. even reacting to the to the play. It's like, no, 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 go to number two outlet on the left side boards. Then I want you to drop back. Take that pass. Go back, skate to the blue line, go to the far blue line, right wing. They're going to dump it, cross dump it. And then I want you to go on the left side, take that cycle that there. And then we're going to have, I'm like, it just doesn't work that way, (laughs) you know? So let, let, let your best Mm -hmm. players be creative. Mm-hmm. I the, the way you just described that just there because we're two very dumb with hockey people i feel like you oh should, shit you feel like no 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 but I, what i'm gonna say is like i feel like you should coach now a canadian nhl team because they are on the biggest <laughs> drought maybe in history in uh history. i know man but like how many canadians are on these teams right That's not the big fact it's like it is, I, it, that is so true <laughs> this narrative of like we haven't brought a cup to canada it's like, come on, you man. I mean, you know. we, we got to get you on our hockey pod spitting chicklets. Yeah. You, you Bring it on, man. You like uh, Stammer is Canadian. Mm. Uh, Landeskog, Swedish Canadian. I mean, Mc, I mean, McKinnon, Makar. I mean, it's it's awesome that we have so many and we're everyone's represented uh, for the most part on so many levels. But it's like when they say it's like we need a cup in 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 Canada. I'm like, guys, that'd be like me and Kendrick watching like American NFL, like American football players in Canada winning for like a Toronto NFL team. Yeah, like exactly. Left it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I like how you mentioned before just how you kind of had to build up some chemistry with like Chris Pratt. I think it's so it's not the first time playing a Navy SEAL for you. Also not the first time playing a Navy SEAL for Chris Pratt either between Lone Survivor and Zero Dark 30. Were you uh-huh. guys kind of giving like veteran hints to the cast? Like, hey, here's what they told me to do here. Here's what they told me to do here. No, we had SEALs on set telling everyone else what they're doing wrong. Oh, you didn't take over uh, from the Navy SEALs and give any advice? Oh, man. I think that's the last thing I want to do is talk for a Navy <laughs> SEAL. Um, these guys, you know, Ray Mendoza, um, you know, obviously Lone Survivor is, is a true story of, of Mark's the trail and, and these guys and the 19 that fought had fallen, uh, through that and, uh, operation red wings. And, um, that movie has honestly given me more than any other film experience I've ever been a part of. Like I'm going to Long Island to be with Mike Murphy's father and his family for the opening of uh, the SEAL Museum. And there is a whole wing of that museum that's uh, dedicated to Operation Red Wing. So, you know, to be with Ray Mendoza and be trained by those guys. And then Ray trained me on this as well. He trained me on True Detective. Um, I'm 
very flattered. I mean, anytime you get the call from these guys to, to be a part of that community, it's a special one. So you and Pratt are beyond being Navy SEAL alum. You're also both technically Marvel alums. So is that something like right. in Hollywood that is like, is that like a sort of unspoken brotherhood where you're like, yeah, we no. we're part of the co- we're cogs of the machine? <laughs> <laughs> uh, not really. I mean, we were fans of one another. I think with Pratt and I, uh, you know, they I was on a Zoom with Pratt, Dave DiGilio, and Antoine, and they were asking me to come on board. And, you know, I'm no no joke. Pratt and I were like ribbing each other within two minutes. And uh, so that's a great sign, you know. Um, and it was quite seamless that that brotherhood and and the deeper you get into this, you'll really understand why um, in this show, you know, you cannot, it's tough to fake chemistry. I think the viewers really do sniff that out pretty easily. Um, But with us, it was, it was very organic. So I feel like we need to, and again, terminal list coming out very, very soon on Amazon prime, all the episodes. Uh, This is the obvious segue. Every single person, yeah. single interview you've ever done, I'm sure the next thing you get asked about is X Men Origins Wolverine, right? Man, I'd love to go Gambit again. That was about to, so. That was like the big question for X Men Origins Wolverine, right? Is like you look at what's happening with the MCU right now. You have mm-hmm. in of madness. They had Patrick Stewart back, right? Like anything oh, yeah. would happen? Would you want to go back, step in the shoes of Gambit? Yeah, I'd love to have my take on him. To be honest, uh, I've said this before. That was. Um, not exactly the best creative outlet, um, you know, so I'd love to make it gritty. You know, I do love like obviously Nolan took Batman to like a, a rooted world and stuff. And that's where I would really lean into for for Remy. Um, New Orleans. I, don't know. I think that like door's a- always open until I get older and and. I'm just bitter at everything and don't want to act anymore <laughs> and just get fat and go golf. I love that, that sounds like the dream. If I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah. great Actually, wait a sec. That sounds fucking amazing. <laughs> yeah. That sounded awesome. Man. You said yeah. like bad thing. You're threatening me with a good time. Exactly. A lonely good time is what I like to call it. Yeah. So the only other person that I think has shown true interest in playing Gambit, besides yourself, obviously, uh, Channing Tatum has wanted to make a, Gan- a Gambit movie forever. So, yeah. theoretically, I mean, we do have a situation. There's multiverses of madness where there's 20 different variations of the same character. We could have one where it's <laughs> yeah. Tatum as Gambit in the same world, and then he's a character where he is among all the X Men. He is one of the more beloved ones, but one of the yeah. f- that didn't really get a full origin or anything like that or anything crazy. Like like Wolverine, right. Cyclops, all these guys, they get it but not for some reason Gambit. I don't know the code there, man. Um, You know, if he gets to take a swing, then I wish him nothing but amazing success with that role. And, um, and I hope he kills it. I'm sure he'll take a strong swing if he gets that opportunity. So um, I don't know. It's, it's, there's a lot of factors obviously that go into something getting greenlit, especially a property like that. Um, you know, they probably want a 10 year contract. They want five movies and this and that. And, and one vision maybe isn't parallel to another. So there's a lot of things that have to go into getting that actually being on set with that Creole accent. So (laughs) it's, uh, it's, it's a, it's a matter of, you know, if and and if it happens i i guarantee you i will fucking swing for the fences hell yeah i love that i love that Spe- speaking of of that that part of the country we, we got to go friday night lights a little bit i'm excited yeah. to talk to you about this because i have a i mean I, i'm not like in the show but i have an interesting connection to it a little bit i was in high school in texas when you filmed it but i actually was in i didn't play my buddies played I was in the school district that you filmed in. I went to Cedar Park High School in Austin. Oh, no and way. So we we like played Pflugerville where yeah. if you're from Austin, the Pflugerville P is the same as the, the Dylan yeah. Panthers P, all that. Uh, so we actually, we played uh, Pflugerville that season you guys were filming. Awesome. And we actually won on like a Hail Mary at the end of the of game. Course. We were like, 
<laughs> we were like, oh shit. It, it, our, like, because they used our school logos, they changed around the school names, they used all the local logos. We were like, oh my God, we are going to, our school in the show, we are going to, we're going to win in a Hail Mary. Our game in that first season, it was like a clip on the TV in the news and we lost. Oh, we no like, way. Off. We had NBC, we had all the cameras, we had everything <laughs> yeah. in our game. We were so fired up. And then we, with the episode, they're like, yeah, they beat the shit out of the, the whatever the Cedar Park team. We we're like, oh, yeah. Man, that- <laughs> I mean, that experience, uh, I remember going with Pete to Westlake right when I got to Texas. Um, obviously, that's like Breeze went there, and I'm sure there's a thousand other NFLers that went through Westlake. Mm-hmm. Um, my stunt double, Eric Smart, is a Texan, played at Tech. Um, I mean, that was an experience, man. Obviously, in Canada, where I'm from, it's it's hockey first and foremost. I could relate, but damn, I mean, when they're getting five, ten thousand people watching these 14 to 16 year olds. I mean, that's incredible. Right. And then you go to a fucking college game and it's 110,000 people going Texas. Why? I mean, that was unbelievable. Um, And, and then you get into the psychological thing of, uh, of it. Imagine being a guy like 18, 19, 20 at UT and you are the epicenter to this university, 110,000 people live on national TV. Then all of a sudden you're, you know, you don't go pro, which there's a very good chance you don't go pro. And then you're, I don't even know, you're running a car wash as a manager the next year. You know, there's a come down from that. And that's a really interesting psychological thing. Of like, have you led all, or are you leaving like this heightened moment? And now what does the rest of your life look like? So well, not to be Debbie Downer here, yeah. but it happens. It yeah, is funny you I, say that though, because Peyton Manning's nephew committed to Texas today. And I oh, mean, okay. his like, his world is going to be in Austin. Awesome, I mean, but you, I've heard you talk about this, your hockey career, you had, you came back for an injury, right? You had, you then re-injured it. And that's how you're kind of had your, your, yeah. That. yeah. And that, was that easy for you to kind of, cause that, that is the thing you just described even more so with high school, like high school kids, yeah. that last football game or that last side, like Kendra, yeah. you played soccer in high school. Like, yeah. you know, for the most part, when you're done in high school, it's over and it's, it's yeah. got to be, it's crushing, right? It really, I mean, I had no did idea. You, I'm saying, did you bring up the show? I guess is my question like that emotion. Yeah, thanks. And I, I do remember we were in uh, Texas Stadium when Riggs lays the cleats down, right, uh, with the sling. And um, that was very, I mean, art simulating life kind of moment where I, I remember I tore my knee up the second time. My first game back, I tore it up on a fucking weird play um, with a brace on. And then uh, my best friend actually took me off the ice. And then I was in the dressing room where the game was still being played. Trainer, whatever, left me alone. I just sat there in my gear for probably another hour. And then, uh, yeah, it's like very, um, you know, very similar to Riggs. Um, But, yeah, I mean, obviously I wouldn't change a thing. It seems to have worked out. In the yeah, long, somewhat. In the long grand scale of things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cosmic scale. Uh, we want to do one last thing with you. Um, yeah. Six pack of questions. They're very, very serious questions. Okay. Right. Yeah. So we, Here we, we go. Prepare for this. The very first one. It's a dude. Is this rapid fire or do I have time? We have five minutes left in the interview. So you, oh, you okay. have discretion. Uh, so the first one, what does Chris Pratt smell like? I mean, yesterday he literally opened the fucking patio door and farted for about a minute. <laughs> That's very Chris Pratt. If you've ever seen the bloopers of Parks and Rec, that is very Pratt. Oh, really? Yeah, he's a big farter. <laughs> yeah, so that'll answer that question. Oh, that's a good one. Um, best non-Gretzky hockey player ever. Steve Eisenman. So Easy quick. Answer. Wow, yeah. Who do we have last time? Bobby Orr? Who who said that? Yeah, we just, who do we who we just talked to said Bobby Orr? Who said that? Bob, oh, White Russell, White Russell. I, I, I think I think McDavid might be the answer eventually, but yeah, that's a rapid oh, fire. Yeah, he's amazing Bobby. too. Yeah. Uh, okay. What's a role you auditioned for really, really wanted, but didn't get the number one in this case. Like, you know, it happens to every actor, but like, I'm telling you, 
It's never happened to me, man. Wow. Um, maybe when I was, you know, homeless in my car, I, I went oh for a hundred when I was like just out of acting class. Um, I would Renner's, jinx born, you, Renner, Renner's born. I was in the room. Mm-hmm. So it'd have to be that I, I read for Renner's born. Uh, I remember calling the director Gilroy and saying, I don't want to do this the night before. Really? Saying, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So I called him. I flew to LA and then I'm like, you know what, man, I really don't want to take this over. And wow. um, it's, it's just something that really wasn't. And he's like, you know what, just come in, read for it. We're going to play around. So I did. And he was awesome. And Renner did a great job. He's an amazing actor. And, um, I think there's like three, three of us that read for it, maybe five. I don't know, but, yeah. um, uh, that was the last audition that I had. Interesting. Yeah. I auditioned for normal heart. Uh, yeah, that was the last read I had. Gotcha. Huh? huh. Good. Very interesting story. All right. We'll, we'll cut it short. It's going to run out of time. Last one though. Big yeah. hypothetical. You get a green light to make any movie unlimited oh, budget. We'll say series two. Director and co-star, you get free reign. Who are you picking? Oh, I get to pick my director and oh, yeah. co-star. Yes. Oh yeah, anyone you Ooh. want. This is a good question. I mean, it depends on the movie, but I'll take. Can I like? Can I bring Paul Newman back? Absolutely. <laughs> sure. You know what? Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I'll take okay. Newman for sure. I'll bring Newman. Oh man director that is tough i mean it depends on the story you're telling you know i'm gonna fucking flatter pete berg we just did some amazing work together and i think we're gonna do another crazy story in the new year so i'll bring i'll bring dirty pete berg I'm surprised they didn't go with uh, another Canadian like uh, Denny Villeneuve was up there. Oh, Denny. Yeah. I mean, I haven't worked with him. He could be a son of a bitch, right? (laughs) There's a lot of people. (laughs) No, I obviously. Yeah, I we were close to working with each other and uh, I hope we get to take a swing together. I hear he's amazing. Um, And obviously his work speaks for himself. But um, yeah, I I, I hope raw from experience. Yeah. <laughs> I hope we can I hope we put this clip out and you get a call from Peter Burke. He's like, I heard you want to bring Paul Newman back. Like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Don't worry. What, what, the hell are you, what are you talking about? Thank you so much. Terminal list July 1st. Uh Amazon Prime. All eight episodes can be exclusively to Prime Video. Absolutely check it out. This this was this was a blast, man. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, thank you guys. Thanks for like it's a it's a fun interview when you're in the middle of four thousand. So yeah, nice yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad we can. You know what? That made that made my day. I'm glad. I'm yeah, glad I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, take care. You Thank too. You.